Hello. Hi. Welcome. So we are here to discuss episodes three and four of Golden Girls. We have our coffees. What kind of coffee are you drinking? I made cold brew with local beans from Thread Coffee Roasters. And I added a big squeeze of Ghirardelli chocolate syrup and milk and ice. So I'm drinking cold brew concentrate from maybe Trader Joe's. Okay. And Starbucks white mocha creamer. Ooh, fancy. It's pretty good. I used way too much creamer. It's hella sweet. That's kind of what you do, though. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Too much for Liz? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so, audience, here's the secret. If I'm making a drink for Liz, I put in the amount that I think would be right of, of sweetener, and then I just keep going. <laughs> so, I just watched these episodes before we hopped on the call. Yes. And I guess you did. Fresh. Mm-hmm. All right. So, they are fresh in our mind. So, to recap, last time we watched episodes one and two, and we had never seen it before. Now, well, that's the whole recap. It's not much of a recap. Yeah. Now, we are watching the next two episodes. I have notes. I have a few questions prepared. Notes. Yep. Yeah. So, shall we start with episode three? What? That would be the logical choice. All right, let's do a summary. Um, this episode was about Betty White going on a cruise with some dude and deciding whether or not to get it on. Yeah, to pop her widow cherry. My first note is just, it's sweet how Betty White, how dumb girl, how she loves her husband so much. She just like, every time she talks about him, she's just like, Oh, and like, it's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's been 15 years since he passed, and she's never been with another man since. Yeah. Oh, but also, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. So, because it starts I out where, um, oh my God, what's her face? Horny girl needs someone to go on a double date with her, and Betty White goes, and she likes the man. And yeah. And... Um, oh, my next note is apparently on their date, they ran a toll booth, and I am like, mm -mm -mm, this seems like a bad influence. Why? Why are you running a toll booth? That's not good. I don't know. Just being whimsical. Just mixing it up. I don't think he worked at the toll booth. I think they just walked into one, and they're wacky kids. That is not law-abiding behavior. Yeah, I guess especially if they kept the tolls. Well, I what I took it to mean was that they just drove through the toll booth and didn't pay. Oh, my God. Now I feel dumb. What did yeah. you think happened? I thought they were like, they like strolled into the toll booth and took their money <laughs> and pretended they worked there. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, no, worse. it makes a lot more sense that they just ran through the toll booth. That's worse. That's more of a crime. It is more of a crime. But, you know, it's cute. Crime is not cute. Isn't it, though? No. Okay. No crime. Zero crime. I say this as someone that makes my living off crime. But also, most of the time, I'm arguing that my clients didn't even do said crime. Yeah. So. No crime. crime. Not cute. Crime. But yeah, I am like, you're just running through the toll booth, not paying your tolls. How, how are the roads going to be upkept? I just feel like on a first date, if a man was like, you know what, we're not going to pay this toll, ha ha ha, I'd be like, that's a weird way to get your jollies, so to speak. You never dated a bad boy, Liz? No. You never, never dated anyone who violated any laws? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm boring. Maybe this is, I don't know, something I need to examine. I guess I am kind of surprised that they weren't like, crimes, 
after that guy who's a con man married to a bunch of people tried to marry horny girl in oh, like yeah, that was a hard two episodes episode. ago. So their moral compass is somewhere toll booth okay, bigamy not, and you know. Which, I mean, not that it's cool to marry multiple people, but, like, they never said he was a con man. And you know what? If he just wanted to marry multiple people, I mean, granted, everyone should probably be on board with it, but, like, live your best life. My next note, moving on, is that Betty White is just so, so stinking cute. Like, I just so want to, like, squeeze her face. I know. Not, like, pinch her cheeks. I mean, just, like, really get in there. I did edit out a good portion of last video where we were just talking about how pretty, like, she is. Yeah. So Gorgeous. Oh, my God. I think it's Horny Girl asks Sassy Girl to open up the jar of nuts for her because she doesn't want to break her nails. It's relatable. Yeah. You work with your hands. <laughs> I love <laughs> Yeah. She's a school teacher. She works with her hands. <laughs> Grading paper. Well so I'm worried that we, we skipped over the card playing. Um, oh, yes. Uh, the, the B plot is that sassy girl and her mom routinely play gin rummy, and the mom wins all the time, and sassy girl is upset. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? I felt that plot so hard because I have been personally victimized by card hustling at the hands of my mother. She is so good at poker, and, like, she, like, one of the first times I brought Tyler over to her house, she busted out, like, a bag of pennies and a deck of cards to play poker, and, like, she just, like, hustled all of our pennies away from us. <laughs> Multiple, we get to keep getting more pennies back, and, like, Every time we sit down with her to play, she just hustles the shit out of us. And, like, I don't know. She's a mild-mannered clerk. She's not, like, a gambling woman. It's, like, the more I learn about your mother, I'm just, like, what a lady. Like, so, mean, well, so while that's happening, Betty White decides that she is going to go on this double date so Horny Girl can go on her date. And then Horny Girl has a boring time, but Betty White has a nice time. They go, so they come back from the date, and all of a sudden, Betty White is like, I'm going out with him tomorrow, and I think, is it that same night that she's like, he invited me on a cruise? It all did happen very fast. It was either after the first, it might have been after the second date, but she's like, he invited me on a, cu uh, on a cruise to the Bahamas? Something like that. Yeah. And she's deciding whether or not to go. And then we see her talking with her two friends, and that's when she says, you know, she hasn't been with anyone since her husband. She's only been with her husband, and does she want to go away with this man? And I like this scene. I did not like this scene. No. You tell me why you liked this scene, and I'll tell you why I did not like this scene. I liked the scene because I thought her friends were, when they're talking, were very supportive. They were, like, not telling her she was a bad person for debating going. They weren't telling her, like, she had to go. They were just, like, you know, very much, like, let's, let's talk about it and whatever you want to do, we'll support you. And they... I wrote in my notes that Sassy Girl was being very supportive. She's like, no one's going to judge you if you go, and if you sleep with this guy, like, you do you. But also, if you're uncomfortable with it, like, that's fine, too. Like, they were very much, like, on her team, and I liked yes. that. Okay, I, I liked that aspect, too. I feel like they definitely, like, supported and validated her feelings, and that's what you want friends to do. However... I don't know how a friend in that situation could not be like, there is one bed in that room and you need to sleep with, if you're gonna sleep with him, you need to do it before you're trapped in a small room at sea with this man for what, a, a week? You need to break that seal before you are trapped at sea. So you don't have the guy like, moving into another room kind of situation, which is just like, I mean, what if, you know, what if she does it with, what if she goes on this cruise and like, he's like a creepy and abusive man? Like, 
I just feel like the, the good friend advice, the real girl talk would have been, you need to, if, if you're saying yes, you got to jump his bones before that thing sets sail. See, and I didn't even think of that. So you're clearly the friend that is missing in this scenario because I didn't think of that at all. They, they yeah, should add a good point. That is an excellent point. I will wear a t-shirt dress if they will put me on the show. You're absolutely right. Like that is, that is the advice that I would not have thought to give. So. But you would have wanted it, wouldn't you? Oh, I absolutely, if I were her and someone gave me that advice, I would have been like, damn, I didn't even think of that. So yes, absolutely. You're the missing friend. Yeah. They need All this time. Yeah. It could have been the platinum girls, but for me. Um, so spoiler alert, she goes to see. The man. I liked the man a lot. He did seem really nice and like progressive and patient for a man of the time. Like I feel like the collective emotional intel intelligence of men in this country has grown by leaps and bounds in the intervening years between then and now. And he was ahead of his time. Yes. Because at first, when they're back in the room, I like that his line is sort of, you know, um, but he wasn't slimy. Like, that was the thing. I felt like he was being genuine. Like, he wanted to sleep with her, and I think he was very open about that. Like, he wasn't trying to be nice for the sake of getting her into bed. I think he was genuinely like, I want to sleep with you, but if you don't, I will respect that. And I... Yeah. So, when he tries to... The, they're getting ready to go to bed and she's making small talk about his bathrobe and the terry cloth because she can't flirt. Terry cloth is a nice fabric. It is, but you know, and this was something that I was thinking about during that scene is like on TV, you see a lot of like these awkward scenes of people being like socially, I don't know, socially inept isn't the word I'm looking for, but like she clearly doesn't know how to flirt with this man. And I think TV shows are often like, we're going to be socially awkward and like relatable. And I think m me, admittedly, I am not a very socially awkward person. I think I excel in that area of my life. So when I see people doing it on TV, I'm like, no, stop it. Just don't say weird things. I mean, everyone says weird things sometimes, but like, I don't know. I was like, this is, you know, this isn't going well, Betty White. His pickup line, well, I guess it's not really a pickup line, but his line is, let's go dancing. And then he turns on music in the room so they can dance. And I thought that was very sweet. It was very sweet. I also like just going off your earlier point about him being like refreshingly patient. I just, I, I felt like he was a, um, just a, a very nice example of, um, like, you can do, you can spend money and, like, have a nice time with person, with a person without it being, you know, transactional. It's not a sex vending machine where you put a cruise in and sex falls out. And, and then they jump to the scene where they're back at the house and everyone is talking and wondering, are they doing it right now? Are they not doing it right now? The other two girls, girls and the mom. And... And the one, well, I did like that they were talking about who, like, they had slept with after their divorces. And I liked that that was pretty, I thought, progressive, where they were having this open conversation about who they boned. So then they jump back to the cruise. And she, I guess, has apparently been in the bathroom crying all night. Betty White has. Mm -hmm. Because she's conflicted. Yeah. And she has a conversation with the man who we like, but he, she goes on to talk about, as we assumed she would, that she would feel unfaithful to her husband by sleeping with another man. And he talks about how he never cheated on his wife, although he may have looked, and he may have patted some bottoms. I just, in what world is a bottom padding by a man who's not your husband or boyfriend, ever consensual. Agreed. And he is a product of his time. Mm. Yeah, but he's enough advanced, I'm not giving him a pass. 
Okay. No, no bottom padding. I mean, is he, is he canceled now? No, because, because I don't know that he'll ever come back on the show and therefore it might be a moot point. And because yeah. we don't have all the details, I am assuming that it was non-consensual bottom padding. Yeah, I assume he was at work and he was just like, ooh, secretary. Yeah, not okay. Not okay. That, it did upset me, the bottom padding. I, I know, I was like, ooh, we might have to rethink this man at that point. I wasn't, I forgot about that until I was looking at my notes. He says the things that one is supposed to say, like you're, you know, it's good to move on if you feel comfortable with it and, you know, whatever. And then the twist. Dump girl has killer pussy? Yes! She thinks she might kill him because her husband died mid-coitus. I was a little relieved because I was hoping that dumb girl, like, would kind of understand that even if she didn't feel comfortable sleeping with him, it's ethically not, like, a gray area. Like, I think ethically you're totally in the clear to fuck someone once your spouse has died. But then when it, she has this other hang up, I was like, okay, all right, I get why this is a bigger deal for you now. And I also love how, like, she does not blame, like, her husband's health or anything like that. She is just like, I did it. She it's, thinks it, that's that powerful. Which, yeah. I mean, I would probably have a complex, too, after that. Yeah, I just feel like you shut the whole works down at that point. Not yeah. because you think you're going to kill again, but it's just, you know. I mean, that's got to be traumatic. But I did like the twist. It made more sense why she would be so hung up on it. It also works with her character. It's like, you know, she's dumb enough to genuinely be concerned that she had, you know, a part in this. I think the man handled it graciously. He's like, I'm probably fine. So then we jump to the B-plot um, with the cards. And it was wholesome and I enjoyed it. It was wholesome. I also enjoyed it. Um, we find out that they really just want, the mom really just likes playing cards, not because she always wins, but because of the talking that she and her daughter do and the conversations and gossip they have. Both of them kind of have the like diarrhea of the mouth situation where if they don't have something to like occupy the first track of their brain, that being the cards, their like sassy brain is in hyperdrive and they can't have a quality conversation because it's just like zinger after zinger. So, well, I think it's like, you know, people with a stutter, how they, they, they talk with the stutter, but then they sing without it. Oh, okay. Science. So then we get to the end where Betty White comes back from the cruise and she does not kiss and tell. But then she does. Then she, well, I really like, I loved the part where Sassy Lady was like, all right, you're not going to tell us, but if you leave the room and don't come back, we'll know that you didn't. And if you come back, you did. And she does sort of like pressure her in the telling, but also like, I thought that was really good. Yeah, it was cute. And of course, Betty White comes back into the room. Did yeah. we never see this guy again? Did I she don't... kill him? I figured we probably wouldn't because I think I'm starting to accept that, like, that's just how this goes. Like, we have someone and they serve their purpose in an episode and then they're gone. Like, but what happened but she, to the cook? Where is he? We, she needs to at least be like, it's too bad it didn't work out be between this man and me. Okay, so I'm going to sort of borrow a concept from, because I was listening to the Gilmore Guys podcast a while ago, and they talk about Gilmore Girls, and I think at some point they discuss that they sort of concede that in that world, even though it's technically like the world that we all inhabit, it's not really. In that world, they live in a space where everyone is witty and has the knowledge, a vast cultural knowledge to get all of these puns and jokes that they make. 
And in their world, it's commonplace. And that's the reality that they're in. And I think I'm starting to accept that the reality of Golden Girls is that people come in, they serve a purpose, they leave, and that that is normal in the world that they exist in. Yes, but I am not going to give up on the Halloween episode just being like a basement full of dead bodies. Wait, what? Where did all these people go, Liz? Are they murdering all of these men who flit in and out of their lives and putting them in the basement? I hope they have a Halloween special where they trot out all of the corpses. Right. But it's probably, it's probably more likely to be your thing. But what happened to the cook? I think they killed him and put him in the basement. Now I have a few follow-up questions and we need to discuss the fashion. First question is, I wrote them down. Oh, who was your favorite character in the episode? Like this episode specifically. I loved old girl I hustling at cards. I thought you would, yeah. It was just very cute. It reminded me of my mom hustling me at cards. I mean, I think I really liked the man, except for the bottom padding. But I liked him because I was pleasantly surprised that he was not gross, but he was he was real. He was honest about his desires, and I respect that. What was your favorite moment? I liked the point when, when Dumb Girl was like, I'm worried I'll kill you. Oh, you know what else I liked? They dropped a new Coke joke in here. She's upset because they keep changing the taste of Coke is a direct quote. And I'm like, oh, so topical. People were very mad about that. So my favorite moment was when they were having the girl talk and they were talking about how, um, I think it was, it was Sassy Girl and she's talking about how she was nervous to have sex with someone and being on top because her face and all the wrinkles would fall forward. And then they tell horny girl to go get a mirror and bend over it and see how her face falls forward. And she's like, whoa, because I don't know. I feel like that's a relatable moment. I feel like that's a conversation that I could see myself having with my friends. And I mean, when I was younger and even we, (laughs) We would always talk about, you have to do, (laughs) my friend would call them gobbler exercises. Oh, is it these? You were supposed to do this and go, to make sure your chin stayed tight. And this was like when we were 19. I don't know why this was a concern. Was there anything you didn't like? I thought it was a pretty solid episode, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, the bottom padding, but other than that, let's talk about the wholesomeness factor. Big wholesome. Probably. Wholesome? Yeah, I would say, you know, nine out of ten wholesome. Too wholesome for Emily. No. Okay. It was tempered with, with the, with the extramarital sex. So this episode is like, I guess, right at the line of good wholesome without being too much. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And The next question is just, and I think you already sort of answered this, but if you were in Betty White's position, would you have gone on the cruise? Yeah, but you gotta, you know, well, okay, here's the thing though. I don't, I don't go on cruises and this is like in the pre-pandemic world, I was like, cruises are a cesspool. You don't get like, like norovirus and just like barf your brains out and be trapped on a ship and like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a cruising person, but I guess if I was like, you know, widowed and, and finding love again and someone offered me a free cruise, I guess I'd go. Yeah. But still with the caveat that you would sleep with him before. Yeah, you got it. Cause you don't want to be, tra- you don't want to be trapped at sea with someone who like, it just goes very sideways after that. Cause it's like, if you're going on the cruise, I, I do kind of feel like you've got to sleep with this person. If I were Betty White and I did not have you there being the voice of reason, I probably would have just gone and been like, we're going to bone on the cruise and it's going to be romantic and not even thought of that. You're lucky to have me in your life. I am because otherwise I would have been the Betty White. I would have been the dumb girl. 
You don't want to be the dumb girl. No, that's why I have you. All right, shall we talk about the clue? In the beginning, what is Sassy Woman's outfit? In the very beginning when they're playing cards, she is this baggy pinstripe, like wide pinstriped sack sort of thing. I don't know if it was a nightgown or what, but it was, I was not into it. She goes big on the like flowy baggy things. Yeah. I've noticed. That is, I guess, her character. And I don't know if that was like a fashion of the time. I don't think I've been at a vintage store and seen like sacks for sale, but <laughs> I guess, you know, it it doesn't mean that it wasn't a fashion. It just means it wasn't a beloved one, right? My next note, I just wrote that horny woman was styling. She came out in like a blue sort of suit type outfit. Yes, I remember that one. It was very nice. I will say, just as a blanket rule, I have not seen a single outfit on dumb girl or horny girl that I would not be thrilled to wear. And then I wrote, and she had this in two episodes, I wrote I was into old lady's bag. I felt like it was kind of like that so ugly and stylish type vibe, where like yeah. it was like this wicker type thing that I don't think is cute, but then it kind of goes full circle and then I do. Yeah, yeah, because it's just, like, it's outrageous, it's unique. Episode four, I wrote that I liked horny girl's apron. Oh, I wrote, at some point, I wrote, is Sassy Girl wearing a collared nightgown? Again, with the weird nightgown wear. I don't know. Oh, I have a couple collared nightgowns. <laughs> I, I mean... I don't really own a nightgown. It's Well... It's nice when you want to not wear pants, but also, like, have something warming the the pants areas. Courtney Girl's yellow dress was very nice. She had on this dress that was, um, the skirt was, like, very flowy. The top was cut a little odd, but it was, like, short sleeves, and they were a little poofy, but I liked it. And then Dumb Girl had a very similar pink dress that also had like the really like kind of flowy skirt and that is like something that I would wear. I love like the long skirt look. Yeah. I love like the bodices of their dresses though are like fitted. Like they're very flattering. But again it's the two that are always styling that had those on. All right episode four. I have far fewer notes for this one. Same. That's all I have. Yeah, like, this is, that's, well, I, that's all I got. And I have, like, the whole page almost for episode. Yeah. This episode, do you, would you like to give the summary? Horny girl, like, when the episode opens, she's cleaning the house, and she's panicking, and she's, you know, dust that again, and she touches something, and she's got to clean it, and nobody can sit on the couch because she just fluffed the cushions. And we learn that it's because her sister, her little sister, is coming into town. And she's like, I hate my sister. And so we learn that the sister is visiting and they trade barbs and the sister's like, you know, basically cut, cut the shit. You know, I want to have an adult relationship, you know, not like that, like a mature grown-ups kind of relationship with you. Um, am I getting ahead of myself if I give the whole summation? Up to you. You decide right the direction you want to take this. Let's let's launch into it. And what, what was else? was there a B plot? The B plot was there was just a baby. A baby right. a, a baby <laughs> appeared. There was a baby. And they were like, look at all the things that babies have these days. They have disposable diapers, they have disposable formula, they have disposable bottles. I used to have to clean these things. <laughs> Look how cute he is. And they're just like <laughs> running around with this baby. Sassy girl just comes in and she's like, I have this baby. It belongs to these people. One of them got in a water skiing accident. So I'm watching the baby. We don't know who those people are. It's irrelevant. There's a baby now. It was, oh, I did write. Cause so as someone who currently has a baby, I was like, Ooh, let's, let's see about this. And she, the one that's like, you know, they're like the baby's going to make a mess. This, the girl that was cleaning, she's like, the baby's gonna make a mess. And they're like, it's a baby. And can confirm, babies don't make a mess. They don't do much at all. If anyone is making a mess, it's me because I'm not being responsible of cleaning up the baby's things. When she was cleaning, 
I have a note and a follow-up note. The note is, why is there a giant urn by the door? My grandma had, like, a very similar urn. Grandma's in Florida, man. I don't, I don't. <sighs> she had these, like, weird gauche touches where it was like, there was rattan furniture, there was shell decor, and then there was, like, Asian stuff like there were some like vertical panels that were like lined up next and you know it's like a scene like like in the Chinese restaurant like I've never seen one outside of a Chinese restaurant I know that's probably like not the most descriptive thing it's just no, I, I know exactly what you're talking about and then and then she had this like ornate Asian styled urn and she put uh umbrellas in it she had it by the door Theirs was by the door, and I wonder if umbrellas lie within. I hope in a future episode we find out what's inside the urn. Oh man, now I want to keep watching just for that. Well, I think there are now going to be probably at least two ongoing questions, which is what happened to the cook and what's in the urn. But then the follow-up note is that, so she's cleaning by the door, and then in that same scene, they're at a different angle in the room. And if you notice behind one of their heads, there is an art picture of the urn! What? <laughs> oh no! It's like no sooner had I wrote what's with the urn than I was like, now they have art of the urn. <laughs> I'm gonna need to look for that because, <laughs> excuse me? Yeah. I mean, I imagine it'll probably still be there in the future, but I was just like, okay. She's cleaning the house and she apparently hates this sister and the sister shows up. Okay, hang on though. I have one note about the urn situation. Did you ever play The Sims? I accused my husband of being a Sim the other night. And then he pees on the floor? <laughs> what happened was we were trying, I think we were getting ready to like head out the door. And like the way that it is, is our dresser is like opposite the foot of the bed. And I wanted him to go and do something, like put something in the car before he left. And I was like, I'm going to get dressed. You do this thing. And I proceeded to like look in my dresser for clothes. And I was like, I thought you were going to do this thing. Why aren't you doing it? And he says, well, you're in the way. And I said, what are you, a sim? And he did not understand that reference. Yeah, it's, he should just like roll over the bed or something to go around. But instead, he's just going to around. <laughs> Yeah. Or rolled over the bed, like, so yes. Anyway, yes, I did play The Sims. You may recall, um, you can, you can purchase this, like, painting of a sad clown. Yes. And, and if you put it on the wall, then it, like, the clown shows up. I don't know if he needed to do something to summon the clown, but, like, the clown, I do remember the clown would show up and he would just, like, cry. And it was <laughs> wait, like, wait, this sounds familiar. Yes, yes. And it was like this clown would like come and ha like somehow the painting summoned the clown. And I wonder if they got a, a painting of an urn and it has summoned the urn. And that sometimes the urn just cries. Back to Golden Girls, I guess. Um, and there's still, there's the baby and it does baby things. Oh yeah, and they're looking at, they talk about having disposable bottles, which as a person with a baby is not something that I have and also seems very wasteful. And they were like, oh, and you can make the formula. I don't know what they were talking about with that either. Cause to me, now that I know about those things, formula, it's just powder and water and you shake, shake, shake. And there it is. Yeah. I'm wondering if, if they were, when they were saying they had to make formula, that's what they were talking about. I wonder if these disposable bottles, I wonder if this was like a Gatorade situation where like the drink is already in the bottle and then you drink it and then you throw it away. Oh, they do make those. Um, that is a thing one can get. They are so much more expensive than regular bottles. So we don't do that. Well, but I mean, that baby belonged to people who have a jet ski, so... That's they got money to burn. We have um, a horny girl, and she thinks, she's convinced the sister is up to something sinister. Because there's yeah. no way that she would just be nice and want to let bygones be bygones. Let's also, I want to discuss about how it didn't seem like they had any real issues. It seemed like they were just annoying kids to each other 
and had decided to never address it as they got older. It sounded like petty kid stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I can see, you know, horny girl's feelings being valid that, you know, her dad didn't pay attention to her and she got blamed for things or whatever, but like, you're an adult, let it go. Like, does she not hear herself? And I would figure that even by the time you got maybe into high school age, you would have the maturity to realize that, okay, like this is not something I should really still be worked up about. And certainly by the time you've left the house. I don't like that that's how horny girl is behaving because it just seemed like, come on, again, I'm going to use the phrase emotional intelligence, like, I'm on board with it, but, but okay. And so she thinks the sister is up to something sinister. And in my notes, I wrote, I hope the sister's up to something sinister. Yeah. I will say, um, I wish that the, what the sister was up to had not been ruined for me by Hulu. When it oh, I didn't me... look at it because it auto-played from the one episode to the next, so it was not ruined for me. Yeah, they ruined it for me, and I'm like, thanks. So I was total shocked, so my next note, I wrote, the kidney! Yeah. Because it turns out she doesn't want something sinister, she wants a kidney. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of sinister to be like, I'm coming into town, and s- instead of being like, I need a kidney, and I'd like to reconnect with you as I, you know, am in this hard time. And then maybe pitch that, you know, if if you are offering one, the physician is available. I don't know. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to be asked over the phone. Yeah, but, you know, at least, like, tell her that, like, you know, I am having a kidney, I'm seeking a kidney donor, or, like, my kidneys suck or something, like, that that is, like, the purpose of her coming. I feel like it's even worse to come into town and then, like, have it basically dropped on you, this, like, high-pressure in-person thing. I would rather have that over the phone. Like, would you rather have all of it over the phone or, like, at least the piece that she's sick over the phone and then work up to it? That's what I would like. I feel like that's the most fair because she needs to process that her sister is in mortal peril and like all of the implications of that, like in their relationship and everything. And then just like have to look someone in the eye and be like, I am not giving you a kidney or I need more time to think about whether I'm giving you a kidney. And also I have no patience. So I say that like, oh, I would like to be asked in person, but if I was the person who needed the kidney, I wouldn't wait. I'd be on the phone being like, hey, kidney, please. Like I wouldn't yeah. take the time to go fly there in person. So can, I know that about myself, <laughs> but it's a flaw. I, like it's a flaw that I don't have patience. I don't know, you're direct. That's how you get kidneys. <laughs> that is how you get kidneys. Can I make a pitch for organ donor registration. Oh yeah, I'm an organ donor. Yeah, well, all of our viewers should also be organ donors. You can specify what parts they can have and what parts they can't. You can. I just, when I got my license, said, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, well, I I said they can take it all because I'm not using it. A lot of people are not organ donors, and I would just like to make a big pitch for that. Um, I have a relative who is an, was an organ donor and an organ recipient relative as well, and it is a very, very long list waiting for kidneys. So, you know, just in case we get, you know, killed in, in some kind of scenario that our, our meats are still good, you know, update that information. Yeah you might save a life, or like 10. Also on the kidney subject, they're talking, this was later in the episode, but they're like, their sister Charmaine has a giant unikidney? Well, but then, so I was thinking about that, but then later when they're, the two sisters are joking and they were saying that basically Charmaine said like she couldn't do this to have gym class. She did, th- she had this ailment to get out of some other thing. So I think I was taking it to mean that this sister just made up excuses for everything and that this unikidney was, again, another excuse. That makes sense. That makes sense. But so they're at lunch and the sister is like, when you're waiting to find out that something sinister, she's like, I'm dying and I need a kidney and I want yours. The sister has to think about it. 
would you give your kidney to a sister you hated? That was my specific question is, would I do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't need both kidneys. I'm sure it helps to have both kidneys. And especially because I feel like the hate was not based in something real. Like, yeah, I mean, if she actually, I feel like if she actually really passionately hated the sister, she would not have the sister come to her home. If one of my brothers called me and said, hey, I need a kidney. Yeah, take my kidney. I'd give you a kidney. I would give probably most, most people I care about, I would probably give a kidney to because it seems like, honestly, if you're dying, kind of, not the least I could do, but... Well, no, it's a pretty big gesture, but still, comparisonly, take my kidney, you know. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, like, I'm a pretty squeamish person, but I do think, like, if I was a match for someone, which, by the way, times have, I'm, I'm just full of facts about organ donation, but, like, the anti-rejection drugs have come a long way, like, from then to now, so, like, nowadays she might have actually been a match. It's more, like, it, the criteria to be a match for someone has, like, very much loosened due to advances in medical science but anyway oh yeah but, she, at the end of the episode she couldn't give a kidney because she wasn't a match but they get they magically get another kidney so it's all good yeah yeah but it's like you know i guess if i was matched for someone i would do it like i'm i'm real real squeamish but like i would do it even if i hated the person because i'm not gonna let them have the satisfaction of me feeling bad about killing them yeah i mean and that that was a point that um that horny girl made in the episode she's like if you die it's my fault because i didn't do it i was almost like just give her the damn kidney i kind of had a feeling she was going to give the kidney because it is still at the end of the day like a wholesome show but Mm -hmm. they kind of fixed it where she has kidneys and the sister lives and you know happy sitcom land i do have a note from when they were talking and i think old lady was saying oh they were talking about would they give kidneys to their children and the old lady was like said she wouldn't give one to her son because he never calls and just sends a cheese nativity at Christmas. And I did write, a cheese nativity sounds nice. Yeah, I would actually favor the cheese nativity gifter for a kidney. Like, say I had two relatives come to me at the same time and like one of them calls and one of them sends me a cheese nativity. That's a hard choice. Which one do I give the kidney to? But if you were gonna take a kidney, you would take it from the one who called less because you care about them less and therefore are okay with them having fewer kidneys. Yeah, I don't know. There's something like very endearing about sending me cheese and leaving me alone. Yeah, yeah, she did say she wouldn't give a kidney to the cheese nativity, son, which I mean. I would. Yeah. Gotta keep those cheese nativities coming. Well, I know what we're doing this Christmas. Carving tiny cheese figures. Yep. Well, you also really, if you're doing it right, you've got to um, use the right kind of cheese for the farm animals. There's like sheep there, right? So, sheep cheese. Sheep milk cheese. Yeah. Everyone else can be cheddar or something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm into it. This sounds like a good holiday activity. All right. So, well, last episode, um, we said 15 likes for... Uh, uh, sauerkraut picture. Sauerkraut. We did not get 15 likes, I don't think. So, Mm-mm. no sauerkraut picture. And uh, we're social distancing right now, so we can't... Well, I mean, it is a reach goal. So, 15 likes before the next episode. And I will... We can distantly carve a cheese nativity. <gasps> yeah. All right. 15 likes for cheese nativity. Yes, we will do it. I don't guarantee every animal because that seems like a lot, but I think I could put in my effort for like a wise man and a cow or something. Yeah, we can, we can figure out who like the essential characters are. I really want this to happen. I want to do this for all of you. Wow. Maybe we need to start just like a second YouTube series <laughs> where we carve religious figures out of various dairy products. That's amazing. Going back to the baby, the B plot of the baby, at one point I guess they talk about how the baby was sleeping during the day because at night they all went in and like woke up the baby to play with the baby. I related to that a little bit because there have been times in recent weeks, you know, 
now that we have the baby, where like Tim and I have been sitting on the couch watching TV and the baby's sleeping. And I'm like, I wonder what the baby's doing. I'm going to bring the baby out here. Can I get the baby? And Tim looks at me and says, I mean, it's your baby. I mean, it's our baby, but he's like, it's your baby. You can do whatever you want. You want to get the baby, get the baby. And then I get the baby and I bring her to the couch and then she's there. And she doesn't do anything. And when she's sleeping and not crying, you know, that's great. But I'll be like, it's time to hang out with the baby now. So I get it. That's cute. And I, I will say I'm kind of like this as a cat mom. If I see them sleeping peacefully, I'm like, I'm going to touch it. My last note was just the end was lame. Yeah. Baby At least they wrapped it up. Baby goes back. Yeah, she magically gets a kidney donor that's not her sister. And it's it's one of those good Mormon kidneys. Yes. So fresh. The end of the episode was kind of lame, but, you know, it is what it is. I guess the questions for this episode, I mean, one of my questions that we addressed was, would you have given the kidney? And then I guess just the same questions as before. Who was your favorite character in this episode? I have a guess as to who it would be for you. I don't like, I don't like any of them. I thought you would kind of like old lady because she was just like very dismissive of this baby. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna, it was like, I thought she was being rude and not in a funny way. She's like walking up to people who are enjoying something and being like, fuck you, the thing you like is dumb. Like, I might not enjoy like cooing over a baby in that way, but I'm not gonna be like, babies are dumb, fuck you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no one was really great in this episode, but I mean, I did, I liked the dumb girl and the sassy girl just because they were like, the baby and I, you know, <laughs> I like, I like the babies. So, well, I like my baby. I don't know how much I like other people's babies, but I like my baby a lot. So, you know, currently I'm, I, I'm feeling that, you know, that was relatable. Yes. Um, favorite moment? Even though Hulu ruined it for me, I liked the reveal of, like, what the sister wanted. I thought they built that really well, and we didn't get any hints. I was, you know, when I when Hulu ruined this for me, I was like, oh, they're going to signal this so bad. Like, they're, the, you know, she's going to be like, oh, I was at an appointment, and then you know it's it's a medical thing or whatever. Or, like, I'm in town to see such and such specialist, and she looks it up in a phone book, and it's a kidney doctor. That was, like... Totally out of the blue. That's true. They The way that they are writing things, they don't tell you before it happens, which is something that I hate. So I, that is an astute criticism, and I like it. Yeah. My favorite part was, again, when they all realized they were sneaking in and looking at the baby. It was just Aww. a big, big mood. Wholesome. Oh, one, one, th- one observation that I had about this. They have added crowd noise. Right. We were arguing about that. There are people like cheering and clapping and laughing and ooing and stuff now. And like, I'm really glad for that because, like, you know, some of these things would have just been eerie without. Yeah. I, um, and last episode you mentioned it and I said I was going to like specifically listen for it and I forgot to. And once again, didn't notice either way that it was there. So it just (sighs) right over my head. It's like how serial killers are face blind. Oh, no. I'm crowd noise blind. So was there anything that you didn't like? I just thought it was a weird B-plot. Like, hey, here's some people we've never heard of, and they just, like, left their baby with us, and now I there's a baby. I so much. I, you know, it wasn't really, like, so much that it was a baby. It was just, like, a very <laughs> bland plot. They did, there, there was no curve with this baby of like suspense or anything it's just the baby is here here is a baby baby i really liked that part just because here's a baby (laughs) but it's called a b plot liz not a b baby Baby (laughs) it's true it was not much of a plot yeah I mean, I just really didn't like the end because it was just like, okay, we wrapped it up in a neat little bow, which I mean, I do sometimes want 
from a sitcom or at least expect it, but it was just very, it happened very abruptly. Just like everything's good. Like I kind of wish they had more of a closure with the sister where like they actually agreed like let's do better as sisters going forward. So it seemed like we, they would have accomplished something. I mean, she alludes that she's looking forward to that relationship, but I think it would have felt better if they had delved more into it and actually showed that conversation taking place. Agreed. And I will say, like, I, I think that the endings are pretty reliably weak on this show. Like, they're rushed and they're very sparse. And I think it's just kind of, they have 23 minutes to work with and it is what it is, but I'm allowed to not like it. And so the last thing is um, the wholesomeness factor. I thought it was middle of the road, like. Yeah, it was medium wholesome. I mean, we learned in the same breath that she was willing to give the kidney as that she did not need to give the kidney. And so therefore it was medium wholesome. Yeah, in a way I kind of, I would have appreciated more wholesome because she had to think too much about it. Yeah. It was through the damn kidney. On a scale of one to ten, let's rate each episode. Um, episode so three, going back to the one with the um, the the sex on the cruise. Yeah, I liked that one a lot, and it's probably the one that I've liked the most so far. Um, I think I would rate that a seven out of ten. And see, I was going to give it an eight, so this is consistent with where we've been. And then the fourth episode with the kidney and the baby. I'm back down to four. Yeah, I I was thinking five, but I like it less than the episode I gave a five to, so I think I am going to have to give it a four, just because, like, eh. So that wraps this up. Um, until next time, stay golden. Stay golden. Bye. Bye.